welcome to this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live, the show which ensures that you profit from your time spent here with experts, either through their industry insights, information, or simply learning from them. And today we have Karen Robinson. She is an author, speaker, therapist, transformational coach, and trauma recovery expert. She has been a professional therapist for 25 years. Welcome to the show, uh, Karen. Thank you so much for having me today. You are welcome to the show. You are welcome to India in this online form. And I'm sure a lot of people, not just in India, but outside will be benefiting from what we'll be talking about. We'll talk about the role of community in trauma recovery. My first question uh, is a basic question, uh, Karen, is to understand, you know, what exactly is trauma? How do people understand about, you know, that, okay, it's something else, not trauma, or this is trauma. Help us understand. You have been a therapist. You are a therapist. You know about these things. But for a common person, it's it's not very easy to understand. So help us understand with this basic stuff. Yeah, trauma is when an adverse situation happens that causes emotional duress or duress. You know, so it could be many different things. It could be something in the environment, like a, a wildfire. It could be a medical trauma, a childhood abuse trauma. It could be a sexual assault, combat, domestic violence. So it could be many different situations. And it, it means it has a lasting impact on the individual. Okay. Okay. You talk of different types of trauma so uh, is it that complex to understand or is it very simple what type of trauma i am facing in my life some people are just more aware than others and a lot of people have what's called complex trauma meaning they have many different forms maybe they were in a home where there was neglect or emotional abuse and then maybe they grow up and join the service and then have experience with combat or maybe they were in japan during the tsunami or a really bad earthquake so, so for some people the trauma is just kind of layer upon layer it makes it more complex okay okay so in 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 case i am suffering from a particular thing what is uh, the best way for me should i immediately go to a therapist a normal doctor or can i take a, take care of it myself itself what is the best way to you know see these things from a common man's perspective yeah so it's it's pretty common or normal after a trauma to have what's called acute stress symptoms where you might not sleep well you might just feel like on edge and that's okay for like a couple of weeks, a few weeks. But if it, if it goes past a month, you really want to start getting help at that point. You know, so because there's strategies and healing modalities that can help, like talking through it. Um, in terms of what will help you the most, there's so many different types of therapy. It really is based on the individual and how they learn and how they process information. Like some people do better with writing. Some people do better with talking. Um, like children, they do better with like play therapy or doing artwork. So everybody's kind of different. And sometimes it's good to use a, a bunch of different approaches. Right, right. In terms of, you know, dealing with, there are different situations you so talk about, about relationships after trauma, communication after trauma, healing after trauma, and obviously symptoms of post-traumatic stress. In all these situations, I guess the role of community, the role of family plays a very important role. How should, especially the family, they should think their role as in case the one of the family members is, is having problems and is passing through trauma. How does that work? As a family member, I may be Helen Hearty, but somebody else needs my help. How do I play that role? So that, you know, and then we come on to the community part. 
Yeah. So family is tricky because sometimes people in our family aren't going to want to talk to us. So it, respecting that person's choice and just being there, you know, being willing to listen, being willing to help them get things done. You know, like if let's say they lost a spouse, you know, what would help the most in that moment? Maybe it just means going to the grocery store or helping prepare a meal or two for the family. So there's more ways to be with people and help them through than, you know, than asking them 85 questions. Maybe they don't want to do that. So family is tricky. You know, we all don't want to open up to our family. Some families are closer than others, right? So it, it just depends on the person and on the family. But I think having a listening ear, you know, showing, you know, compassion, uh, doing tangible errands, things like that can be helpful. Right, right. In terms of community, now you talk about the importance of community when recovering from trauma. Yeah. How do I look at community? One is how the community looks at me. Second thing is how do I look at community? Should I look at it from uh, having any expectations in terms of health? help in that thing how do i build that connection a lot of people are part of any community in a way but you see we don't even know our uh, next door neighbors so right. how do i how do i deal with a situation when i actually am having problems and i need people to be around me what is the way to get started it, it is it is very difficult especially in a urban setting yeah so as human beings, we really are made to be in connection with one another. And that's where a lot of healing, because there's wisdom in groups and communities. And just that support system in place to lean on can be really important. Sometimes as individuals, we, we isolate and we suffer in isolation. So the, how you build community and work through trauma together, it could be through schools, churches, um, support groups. Like for instance, I offer a support group that's virtual um, for women that are healing from trauma. So, but there's all kinds of different support groups out there. I mean, like maybe you're struggling with addiction issues because of your traumas. Like, you know, go ahead and get connected with the support group. A lot of times hospitals will have support groups. Um, your church, there's sometimes there's groups at libraries. Um, doing recreational activities, like maybe joining a bowling league. So you're bowling as you're you know, in community with other people. The, the important thing is to just keep trying and not give up on that. Right, right. In terms of, you know, it is the human uh, nature to get back to as normal life as possible even though the situation might be different. So those people who want to uh, relook at their life or get back to a very normal life after any particular incident, how do they start looking at it again? Should they just uh, run with the full, full force? Should they wait for it? Who tells them that? How do they plan their life? How do they look at their life with much more hope? And you know there is that there is a good future for them. Yeah, it's a great, really great question. So after trauma, I usually recommend, like, of course, there's personality and character differences. Like some people are more resilient than others, but I usually recommend baby steps, meaning, you know, making sure that you focus on your sleep, your appetite, your, you know, your nutrition, your hydration. Um, are you going for small walks? So, you know, slowly building up your energy that way and your, your self-care. And then looking at, like, okay, what is not working for me right now? Like, if I'm going to go back to work, like, am I irritable with people? Like, do I need to really pay attention to my mood? Um, am I feeling anxious? Am I worried a lot? Do I need to pay attention to my thoughts? So, usually going zero to 100 doesn't work for most people in terms of, of grief and trauma recovery. Some people think it works for them because it keeps their mind busy. 
but usually we'll see tra- the signs of the trauma later if they push themselves too hard, too fast. So baby steps is usually recommended for healing. Right, right. Now let's look at two situations. One person can be financially strong and at least there are a few people around them. But some people may not be financially strong. Also, they may be living alone or maybe a partner who has to go and work. How does he or she look at the recovery part here? Because it can be very difficult. You don't have, you have, you have to fight on several fronts at the same time. What is the help that they can seek out? Are there special forums who will help them in these situations? What is the help that they can expect from outside? What is it that extra they can do to help themselves? Yeah, so I, I don't think I understand the question completely because you're talking about financially strong? Yeah, a lot of people who are not very financially strong. Struggling and, and Yeah, and, and also maybe staying alone or, yeah. you know, and they don't have that, you know, uh, capacity in all aspects to deal with that or in, in uh, versus somebody who is well to do facing a problem and still have a few people in the family around to take care of the situation for them. Yeah. yeah so it, it's hard when you don't have a lot of resources. And so what I usually like to say to people is that really a lot of times the resources we need the most, we already have inside of us. Okay. So that, that internal dialogue, that, that talk, you know, telling yourself, you know, I have hope. There is a way forward. Things can get better. You know, trying to encourage yourself. And it might be just doing little things like watching YouTube videos, like motivational speakers or people that inspire you. Sometimes the best things in life don't have money associated with them. Of course, I'm not going to say life is easy if you can't pay your bills. But the, we all have the sun, you know, to go get some sun sign. Um, we all can go outside and maybe go for a little walk or spend time in nature. So focusing on the things that you can control and that you can do. Okay. Okay. Now, let's talk about your uh, your organization. You have a podcast and you people do a lot of work, uh, you know, account, the accountability coaching courses, community forum. Help us understand, you know, what you people do so that a lot of people will find a lot of resources from you itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I also have a blog on, on different ways that to heal from trauma and the different things to look for for signs and how to make yourself emotionally stronger. Um, the role of spiritual spirituality, meditation, you know, yoga, things like that. Um, so we have courses. Well, we have um, what's called cognitive behavioral therapy that helps people, you know, tr- look at the way they think, like track your thoughts. And it's like, okay, is there a healthier way to think about the situation? Because when you change the way you think, you change the way you think. Okay. So we, we teach that, um, we do a coaching recovery. Um, we have a community support group where the, the women can talk about, you know, what's been bothering them over the anything that they're going through, they can get support from one another. And then we also do accountability. Okay, how do you set goals out of trauma? What goal do you need to set to heal your path? How do you get along that with your current relationship? And also, what about your future? Like, do you want to, to be more involved in charity? Do you want to do, ha, uh, change your mission? Do you want to start your own business? You know, what is it that you want to to dream for your future? So that's the kind of stuff that we do. Right, right. In terms of, you know, you talk about spirituality as role in healing and recovery. Now, spirituality is something you go on to a different path and the world is much more about practicality practicality so once you are too much into spirituality how easy it is to transfer from that position to 
the practical part of life is it very easy how should how much should they consume about spirituality in, because otherwise you will go and become a priest or a saint and not look at the world because world is not that easy you need to go out and you know stand for yourself fight for yourself i want to understand how much is good enough in terms of spirituality <laughs> I've never been asked this my whole career. But so, it's very important. <laughs> so what I know about spirituality and meditation is the monks have the least amount of stress in all the world. <laughs> they, they don't have a lot of material possessions or money, but they are very much at peace, right? And so we don't have to go be monks to have this kind of peace. But what we could try to do is be like them a little bit, you know, do a little bit of their practices. So it might mean when you wake up in the morning, you meditate for 10, 15, 20 minutes um, and you practice this. You, you practice, you know, being alone with your flat thoughts, reflection, you know, time alone. Um, you practice being compassionate to people. So I can't say how long each person should do this. You have to do what's right for you. But our spirit is our essence of who we are. It, it helps us with our passions, our purpose. Um, it, it just helps us be better humans. So I think it's pretty important. Right, right. Uh, so how do there, there is much to learn about these things from you, Karen. So and you do so many things including the podcast. So what's the best way for people to, you know, uh, learn more from you? And for those people who want to, you know, get help in a professional capacity. So what's the best way to connect with you? Yeah, I think um, joining my newsletter off, off of my blog is the best way. That way you're on my email list and you see like every week the things that we're doing and what we're offering. We have a, a Free Facebook group as well, and, and we're involved on social media. website. Heal, thrive. That's Wonderful. Website. Wonderful. With this, it's a wrap on this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.